I've got my own camera that is. <laughs> yeah, so um, switching to this API is a pretty well undocumented one, so um, that is why probably it stays quite a mystery for me. Uh, so, uh, yes, today we will try to um, go to the bottom of it and hopefully finally uh, understand it. Okay, so um, let me quickly describe the slide. Cool. Uh, so, something about me, I'm Dr. Papuski, uh, from Poland. Working currently as a Drupal developer um, with a team, uh, from a cutting team uh, from Redis in California. Um, I published my first uh, website in 1999. Yes. And back today, uh, the top social media was Internet Relay Shop. If anyone remember. Um, so, yeah, I'm a PHP developer for around 12 years now. Uh, I've been doing that from uh, the light version 7. But before that, I used to be a um, Symfony developer. So, for me, it was a pretty um, smooth transition. Uh, I just started uh, some uh, Drupalism related to 7. And then, because 7 uh, has a lot of uh, things of the 8, it was a pretty smooth transition. Um, yeah, so you can find us on socials, of course, like on Google and LinkedIn. And I also do have my YouTube channel where I'm posting my hobby videos. Unfortunately, no, no one is watching, so uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, yeah, so I believe that right now is a great moment to say a big thank you for the whole Florida Drupal campaign organizing this beautiful event and for having me here. Um, I'm in a round for at least a week now, and I must admit that um, I'm already lost with the state and with the city. A lot of cool stuff to visit, including the rocket launch, which took place yesterday evening. Um, so, yeah. According to Great Circle Map, it was a pretty long flight for me, starting from Katowice, Katowice in Poland, and then transfer in Frankfurt, Germany, and finally to Florida, Orlando, around 5,000 miles. And eight and hours of flight together. Uh, yeah, so um, in Poland we also have our uh, event, which is to come Poland. Uh, this year it will take place 14th and 14th of May. Um, by the way, the uh, call for papers is still open, so feel free to push your session or just buy a ticket and visit us. Uh, this uh, event is uh, at least 10 years old. Right now, so it's pretty young, established one. Uh, we have a great little party between the days, um, and remember that Poland is a very safe country, one of the safest one in the United Europe, um, and still very, very reasonable, uh, which is really cheap to visit. So, um, yeah, we can easily communicate in English, and uh, we have Uber this in the United Europe, so we can easily travel here and there. That should be absolutely you know, problem. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's quickly look at the agenda for today. We'll try to answer a few questions like why we need some kind of an API, and how and when it was introduced, and then uh, so we will uh, check something more complicated like point of entities and how they are modeled. Then we will go through some use cases, and in the end, hopefully, there will be some questions. This should take us around 14 minutes. Okay, um, I will start with uh, sort of fresh uh, of the knowledge you have about PHP. Uh, let's say you cannot use internet, and the question is, anyone knows how many variable building types PHP has? Listen for the answers, guys. Just guess. No answers at all? What do you think? One? No. It's not one. Once again? Seven. Seven. Okay. Okay, so we've done one and seven. One. Oh, that's a good one. Let's try to uh, check in the um, official documentation. We have found. We have nine. Uh, so, isn't it remarkable already that uh, we have so many good developers here? And we were quite sure. But how many do we find? Yes, you know what? Um, this might be our first slow point why we may need some kind of an API for representing our data, right? So, what we have um, 
they decide that we need to implement API to unify with security properties and fields, which was kind of one. a bigger picture of the problems, uh, but during the process they uh, spotted that we need some kind of maybe level, level API, so uh, they decided that this API might be a um, metadata API, that was the first thought, that they should name it like this, and we during the process, they decided that let's change the name for type API. So that would be the history. So they decided that this low API should process data is some data and data from these players at least. If that's pretty data from the data from the same number of data from the Sorry for that. We will get to your picture pretty soon about the same way that they were able to. I've done some primitive types that we'll be building live stream, we'll be doing the cloud 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 Finally, in 8, we work on the type data API. So this is a new thing showing the comparison between 7 and 8. As you remember, we've got this giant associative RIs in 7 representing a lot of things and uh, browsing through them and going traversing down as a quick pain. So uh, then in 8, we've got the beautiful representation going from, in this particular example, from bottom to top, like the bottom, then key property, I can put property, and then so um, we know the history, we know why, uh, we know when. So let's try to find a place where we can know more about this API. So probably the first choice will be a uh, Drupal org page. I bet that no one was before. <laughs> no one was this, has visited this page before. Uh, yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, as you can see, you will, uh, you will find the uh, response opportunity draft on it's still not ready, so feel free to contribute after this session. Uh, if the thing is very hard, you can get some overviews and uh, plugins and definitions looking inside. We've got some uh, pretty full description, but very modest one, a uh, bunch of uh, class names, interfaces names, and so on and so forth. Uh, at least for me, um, this description is, um, of course, it's valid, but it's not going to stick probably for a very long in your memory. So um, it's valid, but not the perfect. Um, of it. You can also find some interesting diagram then. This is, um, as I call it, a chicken diagram. <laughs> um, I have already seen this guy for many times, and each time it's just rather than telling to understand <laughs> the moving parts in this API. So I'm, I'm not going to use it today as, um, as an example. Okay, so it's not Drupal Org. What else you can check? The plot down and read book from Dango Sipos. Uh, in my case, it was Rupa 8 module development. The second edition, I uh, guess that right now you can buy the Drupa 9, which is the third edition. I don't know if anyone knows <laughs> this difference. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, definitely a great book. Um, I believe that everyone in some point of your life should read it. Um, <laughs> stay out there during the process. Uh, if you are not drinking too much coffee and if you are not starting to losing your friends. Since <laughs> it's super time consuming and, and yeah, it requires a little bit of patience. Um, yeah, so what we've got inside about our API? The author was super kind to provide a seven from nearly 600 pages book about dedicated to our API. What we will find there is some um, uh, flow of um, again, class names, interfaces names, and so on and so forth. But also, we found very, very valid examples. But uh, there are no uh, diagrams, this kind of stuff. So, again, it's some pretty easy stuff to consume. Even the author on the end of this chapter is mentioning that uh, I know that this is a very difficult section to follow. Just don't worry, uh, move on. You can always go back and try to understand. <laughs> so, uh, we will uh, digest this today. Um, okay, so we know from where to get this information. So, let's answer. What the type API really is. So, it has values of any kind of complexity. So, you can have a list of values that then maybe are primitives or more complex from them. It wraps them together and it's going to provide us some additional meaning. A good example might be the timestamp. And, for example, license plate. By the way, this is a Polish license plate that is used in 
So you at least uh, have here two pieces of information, like the license plate number and the country number. And then we are wrapping it together with this beautiful square shape, which is um, our data definition. And this definition provides us additional information that this as a whole is a license plate indeed. Okay, <coughs> maybe uh, more examples, something more connected to the United States. So we have this nutrition sticker. I don't know if anyone's reading this. <laughs> But um, as you can see, this is a list of, I would say, um, more complex uh, ingredients, uh, more complex data, like um, because we know what the cholesterol is, what uh, the proteins, what the vitamin D, and D, for example, and, and how it's going to influence our bodies. Um, so we have this list of more complex data, and then as a whole, it's wrapped together with this nutrition fact sticker, which is providing us this metadata information that this is a nutrition fact sticker, and this is serving size, and so on. And so forth. Of course, uh, this can be treated like um, one instance. We can fill it up with different values, so getting another instance and another instance. Okay, so uh, we go through some examples. Let's see what's under the hood of our API. What are the moving parts? So, so um, the type of API has uh, two main pillars. So I was looking for some image that will stay with you for uh, just a little bit longer than the chicken diagram. So, um, yes, we have these two main pillars that we can uh, instantiate again and again and again and again to put some structure on top of each. With, um, we can do even something more complicated, like a bridge. Okay. And we can remove the very moving part that will be soon to be. Okay, so let's see what we have. On the right, we have uh, data definitions, and on the left, we have data type plugins. I would call them plugins and definitions. And the guy in the middle, he's a very important guy, he's a manager, he's a data manager. Um, so, because uh, we are still around nutrition parts and computer this type of uh, stuff, so the plugins, plugins are like the ingredients in the nutrition parts, right? Like. So, uh, you've got a bunch of like, um, you know, eggs, apples, meal, whatever, you can choose from them, okay? So, um, a lot of to choose from, and then you can prepare a um, kind of a recipe, I would say, a wrapper for them. So you can put some of them in the uh, industry in this recipe. But what's important now is that at this stage, uh, this recipe and this or this does not contain any values. So we know that what are the ingredients, but we not, did not know right now how much milk is required, how many eggs, and so on. So then comes the very important guy, the manager. So what the manager is doing is he's grabbing and injecting values into this uh, recipe list. So then we have a proper recipe, and based on this recipe, we can bake a beautiful instance of a cake. So it's a recipe for a cake. Cool. So um, having the same recipe again, and if it was super tasty, we can inject a different values. And again, we will get from the manager different Instance of the cake and different values, different okay. So basically, this is what type data API is in the very bottom. Um, so you can just try to remember these two pillars and one guy between them, and that should be it. So um, let's go with some page examples. Let's create some uh, very, very primitive definitions so we can get a data definition uh, based on a string primitive plugin. So we get this definition. This definition can get some additional metadata, like a simple label, right? And then comes the guy in the middle, which is the uh, manager, and this guy is injecting value into the definition, right? So as a result, we are going to get another plugin, which can be an um, ingredient for even more complicated structure. And this plugin implements right data interface. So what we can do with this instance? Because we can. Value, you can set the value. So it's kind of a machine readable API, isn't it? Comparing to the associative files. Um, and what else? We can get the data definition indeed. We can get the data like that was used to create this definition. Uh, we can get the label that we set here and anything else that was attached to this actual definition. Let's go with something more complicated, like the uh, representation of our license plate. Uh, so we have this at least two pieces of information and the plate number, the statical definition, I believe it's a license plate, I believe. 
Um, so yeah, so we, we can see this two data definitions created based on the stream, both of them Python and Ado. And then something more complicated. We are wrapping them together with our trade definition, which is new on top of a map data definition. And that of course is also getting uh, radar. So what is the map data definition? That's a good question. Um, to keep things super simple, I can say this is um, abstract representation of our favorite associative allies from Google 7. So, uh, yes, we've created some abstract layer, but still it's super. And there was a very strong need to have something very similar to this uh, associative allies, right? Okay, so at this point, uh, we have this definition of the plate, but we do not have um, the properties for them. So, we're setting the properties like a number and a state and injecting the definitions of them that we've prepared before. Okay, so we have this beautiful definition, but we still do not know what are the data inside, what are the values. So then again comes the manager of the play, and the manager is running this beautiful associative array and injecting to the play definition. But what's important here is that at this time, some automatically uh, the correct values are attached to the correct uh, properties. Right? So just using the um, keys from this uh, array, and the manager is able to uh, inject the correct values in the, the correct place. As a result, we are going to get a again a problem, which is like the part of the representation. Uh, what we can do with this instance, we can get the data definition for the plate itself. So we can get the label that this is license plate. We can go one level down. We can get a number, we can get a state, we can get value, set value, get the definition for each of these piece, two pieces of information. So this guy is looking way more than kind of a uh, machine readable API. Okay, and now something special. Um, I using my enormous design skills as a button developer. I prepared this beautiful diagram, hopefully it's like better than the chicken one. So in the green squares you can see um that means in the red squares you can see a definition. So again two POS definitions and um so let's go from the bottom. You can see that we have these two small green squares, which are some basic strings, wrapped together with a split and a state uh, definitions. And then they are wrapped together with even more complicated structure, like the great definition, which is not data definition, but this guy extends complex data definition. That's why I'm stressing this out, because you will see in the next slide that this is very commonly used. Um, by its definition. Okay, so then the manager comes, injects some values, and we get the instance of not data type plugin. Cool, isn't it? Um, let's go something more complicated. Finally, we are ready to see how content entities are modeled on top of our API. So after you this image again, um, this is the data which is our data API, and this somehow comes the uh, content entities API. Like, um, it is on top somehow, I don't know. And then comes an arrow, or an arrow, so they are, these guys are piling up. Uh, so chat and ask, go and uh, sit on top. Uh, I mean, you can see the, I don't know, the user uh, entities, configuration entities, taxonomy entities, and so on and so forth. But in the very bottom, is our type data API. And some bonus picture, hopefully one day, it's going to look like this. <laughs> in Drupal, but maybe while uh, debugging, you can see some things that um, browsing down and then it may look like this indeed. Uh, again, using my uh, design skills, I prepared the representation of competency. So uh, what's new here is the blue squares, which are showing you where is the type data, type data API in this whole structure. Uh, so content entities, as you know, are based on configurable things. Both of these guys are lists. Um, so starting with configurable fields, what you will find that probably in the rest of the might expect some kind of a definition about them. This time it's a field config configuration entity, so it's a bit more complicated. But this guy implements a data definition interface. But does it mean that uh, it plays two roles besides the configuration entity and also inside data definition? So again, one of the pillars we need. And then looking at the pixels, it's uh, way more simple. We just get this definition, basically definition. But when 
you decide to change anything, the best thing is going to be the best thing ever, I think. Which, which is pretty similar to what we get in the field of this. Okay, so we've got these tools, we are wrapping them together and providing some additional meanings about this entity data definition. But this guy extends complex data definition space, similar to our example with license plate. So this is coming straight from our type data API. Um, yeah, then when some values are injected by the manager, we are going to get an entity adapter uh, instance. Simply, we have added a few times. This guy extends straight from type data class. So as you can see, it's a field again on top. What it is, it's a data type plugin that defines entity uh, data type. Alright, so um, going back to a cooking example, this might be a little bit more complicated structure, as I said, a plugin of one. Um, the second one can be um, a stay and wrap them together with some additional meaning. We can get a beautiful yeah, so this is the representation of complex entity APIs, uh, the API really is. So, but I've uh, promised you to go to the bottom, so we will uh, go and quickly see what we have inside the base fields. Uh, again, as I said, this is our list. Uh, we might expect, uh, expect that we have some definitions in the list. So, indeed, there is a field item data definition that injecting values into We are going to get some. Field type depending on what this field really is. So, um, as an example, it can be a string item that extends string item bytes, but this guy extends map data type plugin. Probably you remember this from the applied license plate example, right? So, this is again built on top of our uh, API. Then, wrapping them together uh, with uh, another definition by the base definition, but this guy extends this data definition. Uh, which comes also from the grid type field. And again, injecting values, so we are going to get few items, but this extends items like the type plugin coming straight from type data API. So this might be a little bit complicated, but um, you can see uh, how things are built on top of, of uh, type data API and why there was a need to build some kind of a low level um, API. Going back to cooking example, some low level. Ingredients like eggs, butter, butter, and as a result, we are getting this cake, which was the cake from this previous slide here in the base fields. Um, all right, so um, I think it's really good with nearly almost everything. Let's uh, go through some examples, like um, checking, for example, what building plugins we have in core. So as you can see, this is a little bit longer than uh, it was defined in the um, in the Jupyter chat. Um, what you can find there, going from the bottom, URL, timestamp, timespan, string data map, probably you remember, language reference, language item list, probably you remember from the confident this integer data, flow data, and when you know as his own plugin duration, data and volume binary, and one guy which was which unexpected, at least for me, the any type. Uh, so let's look what's inside. So indeed, uh, any is um, something that may contain any PHP data for which no other data is anywhere in code, isn't it? Um, let's see if it is used anywhere in code. And we do this. Uh, for example, the data item. Uh, we have these property definitions here on um, base of uh, data definition, uh, which is using the any plugin. Some others and, and other stuff that's either way. So, okay, uh, what you can uh, visit also to understand better the type data API. I would recommend this uh, GitHub repository. Um, you can find there uh, for both kinds like primitive sense maps and serialization information. Only the primitive sense maps are ready currently. Uh, and uh, on the right, you can see um, one example of. of uh, so it's like a price, which is built on map data definition, which you probably remember. Um, so you can set uh, to properties like number and a currency code. Uh, the currency code uh, you get some constraints to validate, and then you uh, get some uh, testing code for this. So really a good place to visit to gain knowledge. Uh, in terms of building some machine readable API, I would recommend this uh, five jars blog, our data and API integrate. 
these guys describe value very well. Um, in example, how you can use some kind of API on top of the type data. Here we have done an API response definition. So as we can see, response definition extends state definition. Is, again, same same class that we've seen a lot of times before. Uh, in this example, the properties are like status, comments, results, the results, I think the last one, which is uh, a data definition, which, which uh, we remember from content entities. Some and so, all right, that was a uh, pretty quick one, but uh, since it's the last question, I don't want to keep you as long as possible. So, thank you very much um, for joining me today and listening for any questions from you. <laughs> yes, that was a speed but as I said, since it's the last, last uh, session to bring out. Uh, everyone is waiting for them. Uh, I hope this image will stay with you with these two pillars. Yes, there we go. Um, currently, I do not have some good examples. I want uh, maybe this. Uh, I would recommend visiting this uh, GitHub repository. We will find there some good examples. Then visiting this Spark.js blog, then see how you can use it. For example, to use the API and prepare some response uh, based on this API. But as I said, uh, basically you can imagine that you have our low API, which is type data, then content entities, and so on and so forth. So. I think mean, it's helpful yeah. just to understand the way it's just saying. Yeah. I'm not curious. It helps you to develop a new code and you know, you can work with that. Or if you find the other code, you can maybe develop it. Certainly, you can understand the schema you have a file. Yeah, so um, it's good to know that we have this kind of an API, which probably was part of the mystery for many. <laughs> All right. So, we are good. Thank you. Thank you. That was your first time. In the US, yes. Thank you.